this will be the second video of carving a 2D panda bear. So, you know, I got this drawn on. So this, when pretend you're taking a picture, this is your camera. So you take your camera and you just have some bamboo pieces in the front of the camera where you don't see the whole thing. You just see like, like the bamboo would be like this close to the camera. Then your bears in the far background and this stuff. So it's hard to hard for me to explain, but it's layers. So this would, the bamboo would be the closest layer to you, right? Um, the land here and this hill and the panda would be the second layer. And all this stuff, this would be, um, well, right here needs to be higher. Inside here needs to be higher in the bamboo because it's meant to look like it's coming around the bamboo, right? So I can't really explain it, but what I'm going to do now, it's layers. Everybody, it's wood carving is layers when you're doing stuff like this. I got this, um, it's one of those cheap Chinese burrs. I hope it's sharp, sharp enough. Yes, they're in my Amazon store. They come in sets of five of different sizes. So what I'm going to do all along this whole piece, everything, I'm going to go along, cut along the outside of all the main, the main focal pieces. So that would be the panda bear, the hill, the ground, the bamboo, this wind, and the moon. So I'm going to cut along all those. And then once I do that cut, then I got to remove the wood inside here. But I want to say something right now, and this is very important. Like I said in the first video, you, when I'm working on this, this stuff, I'll just quickly do it. doesn't matter. But when I'm cutting on the outside of this panda bear, I want to be very precise with my cuts, like get them very perfect to the original image. Because if it's not, then your subject matter might change. You might be carving a pig or a goat or a cow climbing a hill or whatever you want a fish cart climbing a hill so another thing too what i forgot to draw on is sometimes you get confused with these legs see these legs sometimes you get confused which leg is which one's the front which one's the back but if you look at the picture here that this one's the front so i better draw that on now before i um Kind of get ahead of myself. There you go. Okay. So what I'm going to do, like I said, carve on the outline. So it's like knife carving, stops and starts. These will be my um, stops and starts. Then I got to get another burr to remove all the wood inside here. Does that make sense?
Okay, so there you can see I got, uh, now you can kind of see what's happening. Bamboo, this one carries underneath here. It's hard to see because of the shadows, but there's one that in the background that goes up there. This wind stuff, whoosh, um, Panda Mountain. So I just kind of stopped, relaxed, put some music on, let's, I had a sip of my coffee. And if you look at this little hill here, it just kind of like, I, I got to fix this ground. See how this goes up? Because I was just carving fast. So I got to take that out. Make it continue on in the background, right? Not go up like that. It could, I guess. But this hill here, you want, it, it can stop. Like in real life, the hill could come down here and it's just a little pile of donkey shit that the bear's standing on, right? But I want to make it continue there. So it just makes everything flow nicer. And like I said, layers. So here's a layer, here's a layer, here's a layer. And I think like um, a 2D carving is basically what you're doing is kind of fooling the eye because you're not looking at it. When somebody has this hanging on their wall, they're not looking at this as, oh, they, they're going to, first of all, they're going to say, oh, that's a wood carving. It's it, If it's nice, it's nice. If it's not, it's not. I love it. I don't love it. But they're looking at it as a picture. Do you know what I mean? They're looking at it as a picture. Like I'm not looking at this as a painting or a drawing. I'm looking at it as a picture of a panda. So that's kind of that will kind of help you too. So now the next big thing about something like this is undercuts. I like doing undercuts. You can do them with a wood burner. You can do whatever you want to do. But I like doing the undercuts because let me try and explain here. I'm going to have to put my camera on the overhead. But what I am going to use to do them, excuse me, let's get some better lighting here. What I am going to use to do the undercuts, I'm going to use this cuts all taper burr. It's thinner and it's the silver one that's not as aggressive as, gress, aggressive as the extreme. Gee, fur, man. So like I said, undercuts create a lot of extra lot of extra work for you. So let me try and explain this the best I can for the very beginning wood carvers. So say if I'm going to, let's do here a big open area. I left lots of bulk wood there. Also, when you're doing this carving to make stuff pop out, the more of this wood that you take off, if you weren't going to do like um, a background like I'm doing, say if you're going to do stippling, like where I think it's called stippling, where you just put the round dots in there, it's good to try and make it flat in here and not round because then it will look like it's cut. But the more flatter it is on the inside here, like... See how it's round right now? If you make it flat, it's going to be more like a picture. But so let's keep on track here. Undercut. So what I got to do, pretend this is the burr, my pen. I got to go underneath here on an angle. Every, all these things I got to undercut everywhere. Because say for like uh, the wind that I'm going to do in the background here. If I'm going to carve this on here, this wind. Right? And it's kind of, this is just like Japanese stuff. The undercuts, when you, before I carve this, if I go along with this burr here and undercut here and then remove my undercut mark, because then when you're looking at the piece straight on, it doesn't look like it's carrying on, carrying on up the side of, say, this, this part of the wind. It, it will look like it's underneath it. That's right. So let me just kind of, I won't turn the fan on here and let's do a quick, quick, uh, undercut. And this is Western red cedar, by the way. And I'm luckily enough, it's, um, pretty soft. Okay, so now I'm going to get a bump from that undercut, so I'm just going to remove some of that. So now, if I try and do this wind, I can get under here, underneath this this other wind, and it when you look at it straight on, it carries on. It doesn't right. Let's see. Um, okay, so this moon here doesn't have an undercut. Okay, so this is the moon. There's no undercut here. So let's see. See that? It just kind of rides up the moon. For myself, 
it's best to do the undercut because then you get nice shades too. Look at that shadow there. So watch. I'll just kind of do a couple cuts underneath this, underneath here. I get carried away but there you can see looking at let's see if we can get the light over here a bit more there you can see it just continues on underneath the piece kind of mess that up but on this one it rides up the moon so you can do it any way you want that's the way I do it. I like to do it I like to give it a big undercut underneath here looking at it straight on it continues underneath so I got to do that on this whole piece all right, so that's going to be it for today. Um, I'm just still basically getting started on this when I think of it before I forget. Do you guys think I should paint these um, black, um, these swirls in here, the wind, black and red? That's my favorite color. And this will be like kind of gray and black, and this will be green, and then this will be like the white and black, and the sun will be red. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do anyways. That was my plan. Because I could do fall colors, you know, like orange, green, and yellow inside there. So... There's still lots more to do. You see this bamboo, this big bamboo piece. Another thing too I want to say is carving softwood sometimes isn't the, the best wood to carve. You know, like um, this is wide grain, so it's it's super hard to carve because you can see the bumpy grain there. You got hard spots and soft spots of the grain. So it's it's super tricky to do. So I still got to take this bamboo down more this piece because it looks like it's round, it's bent in there it doesn't look natural kind of see if you can see it from that way so I need I got more room to take it down and clean up I got lots of cleaning up to do where I did the undercuts I kind of just kind of went crazy with my cuts all extreme flame burr so there's still lots to do I'll be back tomorrow to do it and to paint this oh boy it's gonna need lots of sanding done yes it is Actually, sorry, everybody. I think I'm going to have to end this video here because I've had some uh, personal personal health issues come up and I've been dealing with them. It's a few days later since I finished carving this. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run around and clean it up with these diamond burrs. Uh, Ben's studio on the lake uses these often. I know uh, Larry Dibbs uses these often. Um, Just Carve Rob uses these often. And um, these are, I ordered these on uh Amazon, I think I ordered these on eBay, but they're 60 grit. So you can see that these ones are more, they're rougher. So the diamond burrs come in grits like sandpaper too. So the lower the grit, the rougher it's going to be. So say if you get 200 grit, it's going to be pretty smooth. So I'm not, you guys know me, I'm not a real wood finisher. So these are probably going to be good enough for me to go run around and clean up all inside of here. It's going to be a lot of work. I'm not going to film. Um, but so you guys, you know, like these diamond bars do work great for, um, cleaning up your carvings. Absolutely. I don't use them enough actually, cause I just don't have enough patience, but you can get these at your like uh, Harbor freight They come in like little plastic sets like this and you get like 30 or 40 in there, maybe even 50 and they're like 10 bucks. So they're super cheap. These are the cheap ones, but you can see kind of the diamonds in there. They're just, um, they're not the best, but I think they'll do what I need for, right? 
So don't be afraid to get some diamond bits to clean up your carvings. And the next video is going to be painting. Oh boy, that's going to be kind of a nightmare. I'm still not sure. What do you guys think? What colors do you think I should paint the backgrounds? Like fall colors or should I do my black and reds like I normally do? And this will kind of be black, white, and um, gray in here. Red moon, white, and uh, black panda. Bamboo will be green. I think I'll just go with my normal stuff. If it turns out, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Anyway, so get yourself some diamond bits.